Right, thank you for joining The Average Golfer. I'm down here at 4 Golf Chester. As Lewis gets himself mic'd up ready for this video, I'll do a quick intro. In fact, know what I'll do? I'll ask you a question. How many of you have ever paid to have an upgrade shaft? So paid extra to have, in theory, a better shaft put in anything, but in this case, in driver. That's the first question. You get in the comment section below. Lou, I'll get mic'd up, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about what we're gonna do. Right, okay, so I'll tell you how this video come about first of all. We did the TS123 and 4 review the other day, and at the end of it all, Lewis posed the question, have you ever tried an upgrade shaft? The answer for me was no. Uh, I hit a few balls with it, and I said, right, we're gonna do another video. So that's why we're here. The question is, why, uh, do you use an upgrade shaft? I don't, no. You don't? No. Nope. Do I use an upgrade shaft? No, you don't. So we're gonna find out something. Do you know anyone that does? I, no. No, no. I don't. So it's really interesting for me, this one. There's a few videos knocking about. In fact, Mark Crossfield has uploaded something in the last couple of days, uh, which is interesting. So uh, we've not copied, we discussed this one on Monday. Mm -hmm. But as a club fitter, an elite club fitter, how many people, who do you think it's geared towards? Ah, uh, I think you've got to, you've got to, <clears throat> I like people who come in with an open mind of, and they're willing to try anything, any brand, any, because it's all about finding the best. You know, we have yeah. the options of upgrade shafts here, uh, upcharge, whatever. Um, and, and really, um, there's very few people, because one big part of fitting as well is budget. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are open to try what's best. What, what's an, sorry, to, make, on, just on budget to interrupt, what is an average upcharge shaft in driver? What would you look at? Oh, so the one we're looking at today, yeah. Um, that that would take the driver to. Um, there's a couple of different price, but but this one we're looking at today, you're looking at around plus two hundred to, to two to, yeah to two hundred and fifty pounds for yeah. that one, on top of the the retail the price of yeah. the driver. So you're taking a, a, a Titleist TS whatever four hundred odd yeah. to go into a six to seven hundred pound driver. Absolutely. So that's a huge difference. So that's probably why the the majority of us wouldn't even take a look at it in the first yeah. place. But then in terms of performance, is it aimed at the better player, do you think? Or is it, or is the stability issues the same for everybody? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's pros and cons to it for, for all, you know, and, and say there's, we don't want a brand of who's, who's this, who's that. You know, there's a lot of sort of higher handicappers with a lot of club head speed um, and launch conditions that would suit it. Um, but again, it's all, um, how much value are you, you going to get out of that shaft okay. relative to the cost of, of that's that a shaft, good point so. and I think that's the ultimate question is performance wise what are we going to see so I am going to try the tensile blue which was in the TS2 head we're going to stick with this tightless thing that we were doing the other day so this is more about the shaft rather than the head but we're going to do tensile blue in the TS2 I'm going to hit numbers today so get what my swings producing today we're then going to look at a couple I'm going to try a few off camera before we decide which then is the best suited yeah because yeah, again they've all got car different characteristics yeah so you can find the best one uh, for you and then we'll get some numbers and we'll we'll see how we'll they do perform. the comparison I'll give you some opinion right okay so i tried a couple of different shafts and by far for me this is what and to be honest with you it's the most similar in weight which was the first thing to the tensile blue so in and around 65 grams isn't it uh, yeah so there's, there's literally a couple of grams between them so next to nothing in weight and again kick points similar again yeah, mid, a lot of yeah, similar so they, this one they both present themselves as mid kick shafts and um, i'd say that this one's a little bit more this is uh high launch low spin yeah so generally you find your upgrade shafts off of that High launch, low, low spin. spin, and that's kind because that's kind of the, the characteristics. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, first thing to note about uh, shafts, upgrade, upcharge shafts. They all tend to be very bold in colour, don't they? Yeah. Is that a, is that a good thing? Because it's a personal thing. But for you, is it? I'm not. I don't like a bright orange shaft, really. Oh, Louis. All right. Well, if that carries on, uh, I might be spending some money. But uh, I've hit a few shots already. Um, before we started off camera but I wanted to hit a few and give you some immediate feedback but that was a good one um, the thing yeah. the one thing that I noticed in the group of shots that I've started to hit and I've heard this mentioned quite a few times is stability as I understand and I'm going to stretch back here to Lou again as I understand the thing about these sort of upcharged shaft the handcrafted shafts there's more fibre, there's more, the, the, the build in terms of what's inside that yeah, shaft. Yeah, so it all comes down to, you know, people look at flex and weight and kick and that. The, the shafts have a torque rating, so yeah. obviously shafts just don't go this way and that way. 
they have a torque rating, so a twist. So again, exactly what you're saying is generally the torque rating on these shafts are lower. Yeah. So there's less twist, which makes them slightly more consistent. Hence, generally when we find, uh, when looking at people like this, their dispersion sometimes is a little bit tighter. Um, they don't offer, um, you know. The, the, it's not a distance thing, is it? It's, it's, it's not, no, you wouldn't be going that. And that's why generally you'll find you know, your better players are more likely to go for them. That, well, that's what I was thinking in the intro, yeah. and that's, you know, we're, we're going to get something out of this. Yeah, but they, like I said, in the balls that I've hit so far, um, the one comment I would make, that wasn't the best of swings, that one. The one comment I would make is that you do feel that stability. I noticed with it some, we, we, we uh, we've do, I've tried this in the past, and it's the first thing that you notice is that um, it's through impact really and I suppose that's the point isn't it through impact which is this torque this twisting that you just referred to yeah. you do feel a little bit of stability and it's noticeable um, let's hit one more that's a better shot good one that one yeah I've hit some half decent balls I tend to be again just hitting a bit of a right to left uh, shot with this a lot of balls ending up sort of slightly left of target, so I'd have to, again, spend a little bit more time with this in terms of uh, this club head, this shaft, and uh, getting my sort of, my setup a little bit, adjusting towards it a little bit, but I'm definitely hitting a more right to left shot there with this as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, and the, the numbers, um, from what we've seen so far, they're producing what I'd expect to see from that shaft, uh, but nothing, nothing that would suggest that not it's, yet, a, no. it's a groundbreaking sort of... Uh, well, I've not, seen the, I've not seen those numbers he's referring to yet, so we'll have a look at those at the end. What I'm going to do, I'm going to hit quite a few shots with this if I can, try and get, get a good cross section of data. Uh, this is set up exactly the same way, so it's 9.5 C3 setting, and then we'll switch this out. I'm going to go to the 10 side blue shaft that I hit with the other day, and we'll do exactly the same. I'll collect quite a bit of data, and then I'll try and give you as much feedback as I can in terms of from me hitting it, and then let's have a look at the numbers, which is the all important thing. Nothing wrong with that one, Lou? Yeah, I like that. How does that feel? You know, like, it's great I mean, that it, we can it just, we're just swapping between the two. And the interesting thing is, and um, the interesting thing for me is that although the weight difference in the shaft uh, is supposedly the same, the weight of the shaft, the feel is totally different. It's a totally different feel in terms of uh, the whole set up to me stability is is noticeable but in saying that i haven't really hit a bad shot with the 10 side blue that's right down the target line so it's, it's interesting for me because like i said the setup it you for me it feels like i'm hitting a totally different golf club so the head, the whole thing feels totally different to me. So if you'd have handed me two clubs, I'd have assumed I was hitting a different head type. So let's say we started with TS2. If you then handed me this and not told me any different, I'd assumed I was hitting a different head. Right. Because it changes the feel of the club. Well, it's interesting for me because I stand there a lot and do this. That you know, when you're looking at ball fight and look at the ball fight with this, uh, when you've been hitting that and, and the ten side blue. Um, you can normally see, or there's you know, a slight drop in distance, or you can you can kind of see it you know, launching or stalling because of the spin rate, etc. And that you know that one should be on, on paper, you know, the not as good shaft. Well, that one's gone two nine spin. You know, it's 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 doing all the same things and all the right things, isn't it? I haven't seen anything that. There's another one, mate. That's half decent. Hitting balls, and this is a great thing for me having Lewis here as well, I'm not flicking back looking to numbers or being guided by that. Hitting balls, I've not seen anything any different. As ever, I've got a few left, I've got a few outright, which is what I'm going to do over a big batch of numbers with driver. But what I'm, I'm not seeing anything different. I can feel a big difference, um, but would that feel be enough to make me want to pay the extra money? Let's go and have a look at the numbers.
Right, okay, before I give you my opinion, let's just go to numbers, because I've seen them, and I'm probably, I'm a little bit surprised in some ways. Um, first of all, let's go to, I'll throw you both sets of numbers in, you can have a good look at these. So let's start off with club head speed, 97.4, 96.4, so I was slightly slower with that uh, Tour AD, um, but not too dissimilar. Club uh, Ball speed, 146.3, 147.2. Nothing in that. Spinning 2,500. Spinning 2,7. Slightly higher spinning on the blue. 240 carry. Um, what have we got there? 238 carry. Wow. Have we got the overalls in? Not that it makes much difference. 264, 262. Yeah. Just with that little bit of difference in spin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dispersion going up now, which is probably, again, uh, a bit of a shocker. Um, Oh, no, shock, a bit of a surprise. I was definitely turning the ball over a bit more with the, um, I'm going to call it the golden shaft, the Tour AD. <laughs> the orange shaft. The orange shaft. It was definitely had more of a right to left shot. And if anything, it was a more stable flight or neutral flight that I hit. And again, that's obviously down to my swing as well. But um, I hit an unbelievably good grouping with the 10 side blue. Yeah, absolutely. What are your thoughts? The, well, my thoughts would be there'd be no reason, you know, no. There'd, there'd be no, and it, and it happens a lot. Um, generally, you know, when you're fitting, you try and find that head shaft combo, and there is generally something you can find that that competes with that is in that you know what we call stock or non-upcharge brackets, um, and people obviously are, are more inclined to go for that. Well, it's a huge difference. I mean, I will say in favour of the Tour AD shaft, uh, and this is the this is the bit that I'm I'm thinking as I'm talking here or listening to Lou is that for me the only thing I would say is that it felt unbelievably stable. And that's the only word I can use to describe it. And that's the only thing, it's a, it was noticeably different. It meant it felt less whippy. I did feel less as if there was um, less torque at yeah. impact. It does it, feel as though the performance should be it, better. Well, that's why I was surprised. I, yeah. was, I was a bit surprised when I looked at the numbers yeah. and the dispersion, it wasn't so much better. So a bit, a bit, like I said, surprise is the word because I was expecting to see much better results with the Tour AD and it didn't happen. Question for you is how many of you that out there have uh, bought an upcharged shaft and what was the reason for doing it? Why did you choose to do it? What was the performance differences that you've seen? Is this stability thing, was that just in my head then or is that something that you've recognised yourselves? What was the reason you did it? But for me, uh, at my level, and again it might change it for better players and again a, a, a more consistent strike, more consistent swing, I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's more suited to The good there. thing about fitting is so individual. Um, yeah, and same with the you know obviously the shaft and the fitting. You know people will have bought for certain reasons, people won't have bought for certain reasons. It's just an opinion. Yeah, you know, and have you have you tried it? Because so yeah, everyone's got their own opinion and everyone's got their own reasons why and why not. Um, and we just want to just. Well, for me, it's just about it, I've never never never. Ne this is not a test that I've ever looked into, and it was it's it's been an eye opener. It's been a bit of a like I say, I'm slightly confused because I would have if you'd have asked me without the without seeing the numbers which one performed better. I knew the 10th side blue was performing very well and, and straight, but I thought it was getting a little bit more out of that uh, Tour AD. And that's the bit that I'm probably slightly surprised by. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. Um, comments down below. Hit the subscribe button. I never ask about subscribing. I always forget to hit about the like and all the rest of it. And the big one is notifications as well. Um, a lot has been said at the moment about YouTube about these notifications being switched on and off. So all I ask is, can you hit that notifications bell and uh, make sure you're getting a bit of a, 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 a reminder as to when a video is posted. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon. I mean, why wouldn't you want to watch me? Exactly.